When I was in graduate school, I studied Biblical Hebrew with this book. I used it a lot. As you can see here, it's really beat up and worn out. I practically memorized this thing. But when I was studying Tanakh on my own, I found that it was very difficult and frustrating that I had to go to a bookshelf every time I wanted to understand one word, for example, a verb. I wanted something handy, something useful, kind of like a cheat sheet or a playbook that would just give me the main information for understanding Biblical Hebrew. Now, fast forward a decade and a half, and I'm teaching Biblical Studies to my students at the Institute of Biblical Culture and the Jewish Theological Seminary in New York. And I told them, right as COVID hit, that I would be making my own version of the cards that I never had. I found an excellent publisher, Eisenbrown's Penn State University Press, and lo and behold, two years later, these cards are ready for you to use. So here they are, let's take a look first at the Biblical Hebrew vocabulary card. The vocabulary card is the most straightforward. Depending on how you count, it has 1,600 or more of the most common words in the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible. The words appear in alphabetical order and are grouped according to their root. So let's take a look at one example. On the very first page, which has the Aleph and Bet letters, we can see that there's an entry for Amar. Now these letters are separated by hyphens, and what that means is that this is a Hebrew root. Almost every verb in Hebrew is going to have a three-letter Hebrew root, and this root is Amar. It also happens to be the most common root in the entire Tanakh. So what does Amar mean? The first thing we see is Q. What Q stands for is the call form, the most basic form of verb, and we'll come back to what this means later on in the video. And the meaning is to say. So it could either be in the future, he will say, it could be the past, she said. No matter what, it's going to be some form of saying. Let's now move on to the second card, the grammar card. This grammar card was really the more difficult of the two to make, and it basically includes everything that I know about Biblical Hebrew. It starts with the alphabet and vowels, and the dot in Hebrew words known as a dagesh. These are critical for beginners, and there are footnotes for more advanced pronunciation issues below. The first major section in blue are the nouns. With noun basics, you'll be able to differentiate a masculine noun from a feminine noun, and a singular noun from a plural noun. The next two charts are more advanced. Construct nouns are tricky, but appear in almost every verse in the entire Tanakh. And there's also a chart for special noun forms, such as directions, repetition, and superlatives. On the last page, I provide detailed charts for prefixes and suffixes, which come in many, many forms. So, for example, you will now be able to tell the difference between bisade in a field and basade in the field. You will also be able to tell the difference between susi, my horse, and susai, my horses. On this page, there are also charts for pronouns, the different types of adjectives, and moving on, there are other small charts for interjections, questions, and negation. There was some extra space, so I included charts on weight and money, volume and length. And finally, I wanted to make sure that there was a detailed, lengthy chart for numbers, because numbers are very, very fussy in Biblical Hebrew. So I wanted to make this very clear, and I have every form from the number 1 all the way to the number 10,000. Now we're going to shift to verbs, which takes up the majority of the card. And the first chart about verbs is called Introduction to Verbs, and it happens to be the largest single chart about verbs that I've ever seen in Biblical Hebrew. I was able to give you not only all the seven different types of verbs, the seven stems, but I was also to be able to give you examples of each and every conjugation. So in one chart, you end up having every form for a strong root, a root that doesn't change too much. And the example I gave following the tradition is katal, to kill. Yeah, I know, it's a lot of killing. Now, this chart is really an ideal chart. It shows you how Biblical Hebrew, all the verbs should look. 
But in reality, if you've ever really looked at one or two verses in the Tanakh, you've probably noticed that the verbs you find don't look ideal. They usually have different vowels, and quite often one of your three root letters disappears. And for this, I made seven gigantic charts, one for each stem in Biblical Hebrew. Each stem is almost like a flavor of a verb. And these are gigantic because they need to be gigantic. There are so many variations that it's quite common to find a very rare form. So in order to understand your verb, I needed to give you everything. I threw the kitchen sink at you. To demonstrate how this works, let's return to that verb we looked at, amar. And if you recall, in the meaning of that verb, we saw a Q, which stood for the kal, the kal stem. That means in order to look up this verb, we really want to look at the kal variations chart. And we'll notice here that there are a number of columns, and each column is differentiated based on the characteristics of the three-letter root that you have. So, since we have amar, which begins with an aleph, we want to look at the column for one, the first letter, Aleph, right there. And we actually see the example is Amar, beginning with an Aleph. Now let's take a look at the box for the imperfect verbs, which are usually in the future tense. We can see that there's a lot of red in this box, especially with the letter Aleph. And that's because the Alephs here lose their vowel. They have no vowel, which means they have no pronunciation. And if we look on the fourth line, we see a very difficult verb. I'm not going to go into all the details of what makes it difficult, but we see a difficult verb, omar, which means I will say. And the parentheses tells you why it's so difficult. We see an aleph that is scratched out. What that means is that the aleph of the root, amar, has actually disappeared. It coalesced with another aleph. And that's what makes this so difficult. So if you happen to see any of these verbs in the Tanakh, especially a difficult one like Omar, this chart will help you translate it and you'll be able to understand it and translate it with precision so that when you see Omar, you'll be able to say, I know what this means. This means I will say. There are also smaller charts for issues such as the Vav consecutive and there are other minor verb topics as well. So that's it. These are the cards. I hope you are able to get them and use them effectively. I hope they can help your Tanakh study. These are available at a very reasonable price on Amazon. I made sure with the publisher they would not be super expensive like other academic works. And what I would like for you, my blessing to you, is that you are able to read the Tanakh better and in a more enjoyable fashion because of these cards. The links for these cards are available in the video description, both the vocabulary and the grammar card, and I hope to see you very soon for my next video.